Why are small groups so important at Ward Church? Small groups are important at Ward Church. Why? And let's begin with a definition. A small group is a group of under 15 people. That's my definition of small. More than 15 is a mid-sized group or a large group. So a group of less than 15 people who meet regularly. Regularly means at least once a month though most of our small groups meet twice a month and some meet weekly, but it's an ongoing regular meeting uh, for the purpose of helping each other live and love like Jesus. There's not only this community and friendship, but it actually spurs us on to love and good deeds. It helps us to live and love like Jesus. And Acts chapter two gives us the snapshot of the earliest Christian community. And it says they devoted themselves to the fellowship all right, it says they, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. That's a great picture of a small group. When we read about the church in the New Testament, essentially we are reading about small groups. Right? We know the early church met in houses. Uh, we know this for sure. This is a matter of historical record. Uh, the book of Acts mentions, you know, the, the house of a man named Jason, the house of a man named Titus Justus, Philip's house, Lydia's house, uh, the house of the Philippian jailer, the house of Mary, the mother of John. That's where people met. And when New Testament writers uh, wrote, they often would greet the believers at the house of, at the house of Priscilla and Aquila, at the house of Aristopolis, at the house of uh, Narcissus, at the house of Nympha and Archippus. And no, I'm not making those names up. They met in houses, right? Uh, uh, houses were where the church met. Uh, the church didn't even have buildings, formal buildings for at least the first 300 years. Now, there were places where they could meet in large groups. In Jerusalem, we know, Acts chapter 5 tells us that they met in the temple courts and from house to house. That is, they met in large group and in small groups. The temple courts uh, could hold 100,000 people. I'd call that a large group. And they met in houses, that small group. And this, in my mind, is the ideal rhythm. A large group and a small group. There are things that happen in a large group that are very hard to replicate in a small group. And there are things that happen in a small group that are very hard to replicate in a large group. I think a small group is the ideal place to pray for each other with knowledge. I think it's the ideal place to apply biblical teaching when we talk about our lives and what are you seeing here and how are you working that out in your life. It's the ideal place for discerning God's will. You know, in the New Testament, they use this phrase where they were making a decision and they would say, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us this collaborative discernment of the Holy Spirit. And really people should not be making decisions, important decisions all on their own about who they're gonna marry and what job they're gonna take. They should be running that by some other godly people and seeking godly wisdom. Small groups are a great place for that. Small groups are a great place to incorporate new members. It's a great place to, to make new friends. I, I, there are lots of reasons I'm a wild fan of small groups. Jesus had a small group. He actually chose his own small group members. He chose 12. You know, he wanted to keep it under 15, my, my, my definition. And uh, uh, what would it like to be chosen to be part of Jesus' small group? He, he did life with them. They ate together. They served together. The Apostle Paul had a small group. He selected a handful of people to travel with and to do ministry with. Paul was not a lone ranger. We generally do not grow in isolation. We need each other to sharpen each other. So we want everyone at Ward Church connected to a smaller relational group. I always tell our new members, uh, I, I say, you will always feel like you're on the outside looking in until you join a group or a team. You're always gonna feel like you're on the outside looking in until you're part of a group or a team and then you're gonna have this sense of belonging. Everyone needs a place where they can serve and be served, where they can know and be known, where they can celebrate and be celebrated. And that's why small groups are so important at Ward Church.